For the first time since the core box, we have a punch board of brand new double-sided tokens, lovingly shrink-wrapped to keep them safe. Don't throw your box away without removing them. There are three or four different types depending on how you count them, and you'll probably need all of them if you're playing with the new content in this box. As it may have been a while since you unpacked your core set, remember to locate the side of the punch board that the cutting die has struck. That's this one here, not this one here. If you apply gentle even pressure at the centre of the token, then they should pop out easily with no tearing. Let's try it again from the other side. Nice. If you get a bit of residue, then you can trim them off with scissors. First, let's look at the seven key tokens, which have a generic grey design on one side and a unique colour and key design on the rear. These are new multi-purpose objective markers. If you are a long-time player, you'll be familiar with the various scenarios wanting you to use resource, clue, doom and even chaos tokens as tracking markers of various kinds, which can be a little confusing. Now, after four years, we finally have a dedicated solution, which the board game has had since day one, and is practically the same thing. Although it is early days, all the scenario instructions refer to each token by colour, using words, not by showing you the actual token colour or reprinting the symbol. So if you're colourblind, then sucks to be you! What you can do is compare the token with the picture on the front of the campaign guide to try and match up the symbol to work out which one it is, which is definitely a fiddly way of doing things and adds way more time to the already lengthy setups. The best thing about these is they are square and thus tactilely different from those other tokens which helps when fishing about in a bag. These keys do nothing on their own and any specific effects are described within the scenario itself. However, there are a couple of general rules about what happens if cards with keys on leave play. The next set of tokens are these round flood tokens designed to mark locations. There are 19 of them, which seems an odd number, but they have to account for the fact that you will probably lose some. They are double sided, with the pale side representing a partially flooded location, and the darker side signifying a fully flooded location. One side also has the planet spread out, and the other has them in syzygy. <laughs> we'll explain later. The rules for these are broken down to their most basic level, in theory making them idiot proof. What a shame they didn't bother to do this with other rules, eh? Finally, we have 10 new round tokens of one colour and 10 of another. These are the same dimensions as your chaos tokens, which is handy as that's where they go. The golden ones here are blessed tokens. When you draw one from the chaos bag as part of a skill test, they give you a plus two to that test and have you draw another token which you resolve as normal. The purple ones here are curse tokens. When you draw one from the chaos bag as part of a skill test, they give you minus two to that test and have you draw another token which you resolve as normal. They are also cumulative, so you can draw a blessed token that gives you a plus two, a second blessed token for a total of plus four, a curse token that takes you back down to plus two, a third blessed token moving up to plus four again before you finally pull a regular token and stop drawing. And as you can have up to ten of each token in the bag, you can be here for some time. What was once an elegant system of draw one random number, then perform some simple addition, has now bloated beyond all recognition, potentially increasing the duration and complexity of every single skill test you take. And if you hate the random nature of token draw, you will definitely want to flip the table and quit this game in disgust. But there are some saving graces. These tokens are not mandatory additions to this or any campaign. Your chaos bag by default contains no bless or curse tokens. They only enter the bag through player or investigator cards that specifically instruct you to do so, like this one here. And unlike the regular chaos tokens, once you draw a bless or curse token, you don't put them back in the bag. These are one and done modifiers that disappear, so it's unlikely you will end up with 10 of each in your bag. Unless you want to for some reason. So you don't have to introduce these into your games if you don't want to. Although, spoiler warning, some of the scenarios in the Innsmouth Conspiracy campaign may chuck in a token or two. Be warned. But from what we've seen today, it's not overwhelming. The Bless and Curse idea are mechanical staples of the Arkham Horror universe and you'll see them pop up in other games. 
The flood tokens are about 3 quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters, and the keys are fractionally smaller at 18 millimeters. The bless and curse are 25 millimeters or 1 inch in diameter, the same size as your coin capsules. Oh, we mean chaos tokens. It's been a long video, right? Each of them are the regular 2 millimeters thick. And yes, all your third party manufacturers released their complimentary product before we even saw a copy of this box. Thanks for watching everyone! Look for more previews of Innsmouth as we wait for the FAQ to drop before commencing our mighty unboxing video. We have a metric fish ton of other videos you can watch in the meantime, so please do check out our playlists!